enjoying another wonderful cappuccino here at one of my favorite coffee stops here in La Crosse, Wisconsin, Cool Beans Coffee Shop on the corner of La Crosse and West Avenue. Hey, guys. hey Corey. Hey. That's George and Steve, they're the owners. There you are. <laughs> Get a lot of people that say, got tight hamstrings. And what do people do for the tight hamstrings? They stretch. Nothing wrong with stretching. A lot of their stretching is more isolated. You know, they spend time on the floor, they extend their knee, they reach for their toes, they round their back, and they really don't involve the rest of the body. And so the brain doesn't really receive much benefit to this. You feel the stretch, but then typically what will happen is once you've completed that, the muscles get tight again. What we need to do is we need to find ways to be integrating when we stretch. So this exercise that we're going to talk about today, the windmill. What's great about the windmill is that it can be done with body weight. The setup is pretty simple. You get a nice wide stance, you raise one hand up in the air, keeping that arm elongated, keep that elbow locked out. Whatever hand is up in the air, slide the hips to that side. So we're looking at a nice hinge to the side, reach it to the ground, sliding it down the inside of your thigh, creating this nice T. From this position, whatever arm is up reaching for the ceiling, that same side leg is straight and locked out. Other knee has a little bend to it, so you should experience a nice stretch through that hamstring of the bent knee. And you're going to feel that tie in. It's going to tie into the hamstring, go around through the glutes, and find itself on the other side of your upper body. And you might be thinking to yourself, okay, that's a good stretch. How can I make it more? Well, here we go. Take a kettlebell. Put that kettlebell up over your head and perform the same movement. What's great about this is that load above your head is going to really have you tuned in because when you have a weight over your head, you better be alert, you better be ready, you better be all systems go. But that resistance above there, that weight above your head, it really solidifies that mobility. It juices it up. Now how can we make this more? Should we? We could. Well, let's first address this. How could we make it less? Get some people, they can't hold the kettlebell over their head. That's fine. Why don't we substitute a super band? We can even make this movement a hip hinge side plank. Let's put a kettlebell in the bottom hand. So enter kettlebell number two. So we can look at having the same weight. Hand up, hand down. Bring the kettlebell, touch the floor. Now from this position, pause for a second. And then rise back up. Having a little more fun with it. Let's introduce a heavier kettlebell on the bottom. So we've got the hand up in the air, we've got a big kettlebell on the bottom. Now we have a huge side plank into that deadlift as we rise up. One little thing I like to sneak in there just because this is me, I like to take my ultimate sandbag, a nice heavy ultimate sandbag. I'm looking to have a loose handle on the ultimate sandbag. And then as I rise up, the handle tenses, makes my core have to really turn on, dial up. It just doesn't get any better than that. If you're tired of the same old stretches that aren't really offering you what you need because your muscles just return right back to where they are, throw a windmill in the mix. To really enjoy the flavors that comes out of this as we tie in what our body wants. Upper body on the right half, lower body on the left, and vice versa. And every now and then it's nice to get some weird odd looks from your neighbors. Take your seven-year-old son that weighs over 60 pounds, probably close to 70 I'm thinking. Go ahead and windmill with that for a little bit. <laughs> See what happens. If you don't have one, I'll rent one to you. Cheap. So keep moving, keep playing, have a good time.